Hello, welcome to this module of the Seafood CSC Masterclass in Fisheries Economics. In this module, we extend our discussion of the bioeconomic model in two ways. Firstly, it provides more detail of the underlying biological and economic relationships. Secondly, it presents our analysis of the maximum economic yield in a static or single period framework. In this sense then, this discussion is less complete than the dynamic framework as it effectively ignores the fact that the net benefits of a fishing stock occur over time. By the end of this discussion, you will be able to explain the key features of a static bioeconomic model and illustrate it graphically, use the static model to explain the relationship between MEY and MSY management targets and the open access outcome in the fishery, and explore what happens to MEY when the value of key biological and economic variables change. The module covers six topic areas. Self-assessment checkpoints help test your understanding throughout the module. Solutions to the checkpoint questions are available at the end of the module. As in the previous module, we begin with a description of the biological growth process of fish. We model an average relationship between the growth of the fish population and the size of the fish population. In other words, the model does not attempt to characterise the fishery on a day-to-day -day basis, rather in terms of some long-term average say yearly or seasonally. Maintaining the same notation as in the previous module, we denote the population biomass as B and the growth in this biomass between consecutive periods as G of B. We usually assume a density dependent growth relationship, implying that incremental growth in biomass slows at higher population densities. The Schaefer growth model is commonly used. In this model, the periodic growth or surplus production is related to the biological carrying capacity of the fishery and the intrinsic growth rate. The population carrying capacity, Bmax, is the finite upper bound on the size to which the population can grow. The intrinsic growth rate, R, represents the proportional rate at which the fish stock would grow when its size is small relative to the carrying capacity of the fishery. Here we show the biological growth relationship in two ways. The figure on the left shows how stock or biomass will grow through time in the absence of any human predation. Note that this is drawn for a fish stock that has a minimum viable population which we denote as B min. The figure on the right plots the same information but shows periodic growth of the fish resource on the vertical axis and stock on the horizontal. Given the logistical density dependent growth pattern of the Schaefer model, the growth increment is small at low levels of stock, increases to reach maximum, before falling at higher stock levels to eventually reach zero at carrying capacity. Having answered the checkpoint questions, you will understand why we refer to the Schaefer model as a surplus production model. Growth in the fish stock is surplus to that required to keep the population at the same level. The surplus could be removed by fishing and the population would remain unchanged. The figure showing the growth of biomass as a function of stock can also be treated as a sustainable yield curve, providing an estimate of long run sustainable yield at various biomass levels. However, if we harvest less than the sustainable yield at a given stock level, the population will grow. If we harvest more, that is overfishing, the stock will decline. We are now ready to revisit the human side of the bioeconomic model. To begin with, we need to define an economic production function for the fishery. That is, the relationship between inputs and output, or harvest. The harvest will depend on the amount of economic resources or effort devoted to fishing. This includes capital, boats and gear, labour, skills, materials and energy. In applied work, we can represent effort in a number of ways. The number of boat days or hooks, for example. But for our purposes, we think of effort, denoted E, as an aggregate measure of all the resources used. The harvest will also depend on the size of the fish stock. All other things being equal, the larger the stock, the greater the harvest for any given level of effort. In other words, the amount of fish caught per unit effort expended is proportional to the size of the fish population. We know from Module 1 that economic decisions are made with reference to the benefits and costs of actions. The 
The total cost of harvesting depends on the amount of effort. The more effort is used in each period, the higher the total cost of fishing. For simplicity, we assume a linear relationship between the total cost and effort, where W is the cost per unit effort, which is constant. On the benefit side, we assume that total benefit, or revenue from harvesting, depends on the price of fish, or P, and the quantity of fish harvested, which we denote by H. The net benefit of fishing is then given as the difference between total benefits and total costs. It is worth taking a moment to remind ourselves what this net benefit represents in economics. Remember from module one that in economics, total cost includes all opportunity costs. A positive net benefit therefore reflects a return that is above normal. That is what effort would earn in the next best alternative use. This is a return to the natural resource or fish. And since fish in the wild cannot easily be reproduced, we refer to this net benefit as a resource rent. It is clear that if you were the sole owner of this fishery, you would want to choose the level of effort, and hence harvest and stock, that maximise the size of this rent. Similarly, as a part of a collective ownership arrangement, or as a manager whose interest lies in maximising the value of the fishery to society. Not surprisingly then, the goal of finding the level of effort that maximises the size of the rent or economic yield of the fishery is well known. The figure shows the relationship between sustainable yield, revenue, and cost, and the level of fishing effort for the Golden Schaefer model. Graphically, the economic yield is shown as the vertical distance between the total benefit and total cost functions. This distance is at its greatest at the level of effort referred to as maximum economic yield, denoted by EMEY. Note that this level of effort uniquely defines the sustainable harvest, stock level, and net benefit of the fishery when it is managed to maximise the economic yield. Recall from Module 1 how we emphasised the role of marginal thinking. The graph shows the same problem in terms of the marginal benefit and marginal cost of increasing effort in the fishery. The economically efficient effort level is where the marginal benefit of additional effort is equal to the marginal cost of additional effort. We now compare the level of effort, harvest and rent that maximises economic yield with the levels attained with the goal of maximum sustainable yield, MSY, in our static model. From the figures shown here, we can see that the level of effort that maximises the sustainable catch, labelled as EMSY, is greater than the level that maximises economic yield. Furthermore, the MSY harvest policy will result in a lower return to the fish stock and a lower level of biomass. MSY will, however, result in higher fish catches. It is important to be clear about why economic efficiency requires higher stock levels than MSY in the static model, a goal based solely on biological considerations. The answer lies in understanding the human part of the bioeconomic model, that is, the harvest function, which captures the fact that the amount of fish caught per unit effort expended is proportional to the size of the fish population. The Gordon Schaefer framework is a useful one for illustrating the tragedy of open access in the fishery. Recall that in open access, each individual uses the resource without taking into account the effect that their use has on others. Since fishers do not have a legal right to the rent from the fish stock, they will continue to increase their effort until all rent is gone, and each fisher earns a normal profit on economic resources used in the fishery. The fishery will be economically overfished. Whether it will also be biologically overfished depends on the characteristics of the stock, the fishing operation, and the criteria used to define biological overfishing. The static bioeconomic model ignores the opportunity cost of having wealth tied up in fish biomass rather than in the bank, and is therefore a special case of the dynamic problem where the real rate of interest or discount is zero. Despite this being an unrealistic assumption, it provides a powerful framework for understanding the key issues related to fisheries management. The models considered here are simplistic, and much work has been directed at developing more realistic fisheries models that incorporate a greater level of complexity. Examples of where some of the following extensions have been incorporated 
are provided in the reading list at the end of the module.